It says there is the word of the covenant. That means you, there is a point you get to you, you, you like this. Are you following? Because covenant is an agreement between two people, two parties. Are you following me? So you have reached a point in your life that said, God, it is me and you. This is the way. When it comes to this issue, this is it. When it comes to this, that's what covenant is. So when people give offering, they say that he may establish his covenant as he swear unto the Father this day. But well, you are not in covenant. You are not in covenant. Okay, tell me. Let me start. Don't tell me this house openly because I know you want to answer if I ask openly. Mm -hmm. Husband and wife. Wife, what covenant do you have with God concerning your husband? A lot of people don't understand this thing. <laughs> I was um, counseling a, I was to counsel a couple, I think about a year or two years ago, and the husband is a pastor, and they are having it rough, and um, I knew I was going to see them, and in the morning, as I was just med I was not even meditating on their own case. I heard a voice inside me when they flashed my spirit, and I and uh, they said, uh, somebody you knows uh, when you are talking between man and wife. They said uh, my wife is very bad, or my husband is very bad, and somebody said, uh, "Do you want to marry an angel?" You know, in that regard, that is, except if you marry an angel, then there won't be crisis. But the Bible says, and they well, they fought in heaven. The angels too fought. <laughs> is that not in your Bible? Yes. Uh, so, so it is not the fighting. Now, if I slap Pastor Travick. He has two choices. Slap me back or go away. Now, if he goes away, they say he's a fool. But he's never written on his head that he's a fool. And if he slaps me back, it now becomes too fighting. It now becomes a fight. If I slap him, that's an assault or an attack or something. It's just me. Are you following me? Now, I now learned something, which I now saw something which I have been doing all along. All this thing comes down to the practical choices you make. I made a choice to marry my wife. It's my choice. Whoever she is, whatever she does, that, that's the person I marry. That's my choice. It's not your business. Are you following me? So your wife is good, is back. You have made that choice. Live with it. Enjoy it. Now listen to me, you see, it's very tough on a lot of people because they don't understand this thing. They think, no, you have to say that. You see, when God gives you a path to go, it looks foolish, but it always comes out better at the letter. Amen. Are you following me? My husband is a very terrible man. He do not know this man. Is he, well, he, if he was that terrible, I would ask you a question, why did you marry him? You, you understand what I'm saying? Because all these people you marry one to the other may, are not necessarily that way before or did not necessarily manifest that way before. And when events begins to come out, you see, there is so much that God has said in his word, right? You now take them and make them your choice. That's what you mean by a covenant. That is now your choice. Are you following me? Now, that is a covenant. Lord, as long as my wife is concerned, she will not hear noise from me, no matter what. As long as my husband is concerned, no matter what he does, I will still be true to him. Are you following me? And you now expect God, whose voice or word you took in making that covenant, to do the rest. Amen. Are you following me now? To do the rest. But a lot of us, when you read Second Chronicles twenty twenty, he said, "You shall not need to fight in this battle. I will fight for you." But most of us don't have that patience. We are fighting our fight. And you can see the result you are getting. Very good result. <laughs> are, are you following me? I'm trying to show us something that you can you you can walk with God as he said, go speak with my words unto them. Go speak what with my words unto them. My children, when they were about 30 years old, they came on holiday here in the US and stayed with a family. With a family, that is my own family. Mm -hmm. After three days, they told their mom, we can't stay here again. They want to go somewhere. Why? Because those two shout a lot. They've never, and I mean it under God, never seen me shout once to my wife. Not once. You can ask her, she comes around. Not once. And I mean it because I won't do it. Because I even love my mother more than my father anyway, so I can't shout on the woman. But let's leave that apart. You see? They couldn't stand that environment because they have never seen it. So we have to move them to my brother's place in Wisconsin. 
They have never seen it. Look, it's your choice. Do you want God to fight for you? Then go the way God has said it. Financially, it's the same. Do you want God to turn your financial fortune around? God has said so much on how to handle money. Are you following me? It's the same. Just take on any issue of life. It's the same. But it has to be something you make or you take as a decision by yourself. The pastor teaches, he preaches, he says a lot of things. Then, I know you write notes. But I'm angry with all those notes because I know you don't read them. Am I talking? Yes. Most people just write notes. They don't read it. If I bring my laptop here, you see me, I update my notes inside my... They are all there. I don't play with it. I go over... They don't read it. Now, you see, the beauty of every meeting comes with the decisions you draw from them. You understand what I mean? Certain things... The pastor is preaching. He's saying a lot of things. Something strikes you. You pick it, but you don't review it again. You don't make it your own again. You just go. And after some time, of course, you know the parable of the sower. The birds that will collect it, they are roving around. They just, when you finish, they just take this. You don't want it. They collect it. You saw the parable that the Lord Jesus Christ gave. Some take root a little bit, but because they make no decision out of it, they eventually lose it. I don't enter service without this. You know what this is. I can come here and still take envelope and put it. it's still You still give offering. But you see, I've come to a point. I don't do. It's like my body, something is missing when I enter service without my offering. Ready? Are you following me? Somebody say, what's the difference? After all, whether you are in the church, they take offering, you just take envelope. You see, I'm not saying when you take envelope and put it, it's wrong. I'm just showing you something. I have made that. And there is the minimum. Whether you call it home cell, Two, three people talking or church. There is the minimum that must come from me to God in any meeting. It's a minimum. Are you following me? I set myself. So it's not that uh, we are doing midweek service, that's midweek offering. And then Sunday service, uh, so you have midweek God and Sunday service God. Or you have home cell God is a weaker one when it's home cell. It's not as powerful as when it's Sunday service. No. Uh, are you following me? These are paths you choose. Please understand me carefully, because he said the waters made him. It's not just because you read these scriptures, then you just become great. No, there is the response from you. If thou, I, I, he said, receive, I pray thee the Lord from his mouth, and lay up his word in your heart. Look at verse 3, uh, 23 of uh, Job 21. He said, if thou return to the Almighty. That word return to the Almighty is not because you are backsliding, which actually is, you know. But if thou return to the Almighty, it means if you now submit yourself and decide to go by the authority of this word. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Are you following me? He's just using different formats of God by his word. If you return to him, Look at the next statement. Uh. If thou return to the Almighty, look at that statement. What is that statement? I didn't hear you. Thou shalt be built up. Did you see the way it goes? If you return to the Almighty, that means you now choose. This is the path I'm going. These things must influence me. Esther said, if I perish, I perish. This is what I'm doing. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. Are you following me? Then you begin to see. You know what? Everybody know what built up means, right? I mean, your status is changing. The glory you are looking for is manifesting. Things are changing. The word of God are not stories. Are you following me? They are not stories.